All right, I'm going to start by going over the practice problems, which are on the end of the enthalpy intro notes. So there are just three practice problems there, and it's at the end of the enthalpy intro notes. The first thing you have to do if you look at your steps above is you have to balance uh, the reaction that you're given. This first one actually is so hard that I wouldn't expect that many of you would be able to balance it. So um, I'm just going to give it to you here. It's 2, 3, 3, 6. All right, and so um, the next thing I want to talk about is what this actually means. So what this is, we have two moles of aluminum uh, reacting with three moles of ammonium nitrate. Uh, it creates one mole of aluminum oxide, three moles of nitrogen gas, and six moles of water. And through this entire process, uh, 2,030 kilojoules of energy are released. And that delta H being negative means it's exothermic, which means we're releasing energy. So all that sort of goes together. So this is where the new thing comes in with this unit. So what this says is that we have 0 0.361 moles of aluminum. And then if you look at our balanced chemical equation, we said for every two moles of aluminum that we have, we're going to produce 20, 30 kilojoules, 2,030 kilojoules. All right, and so what we're doing here is we're, us we're using the ratios or the uh, coefficients in the balanced chemical equation to figure out how much energy is going to be released. And again, you would read this, two moles of aluminum react with three moles of ammonium nitrate to produce one mole of aluminum oxide, three moles of nitrogen gas, six moles of water. And this entire process produces 2,030 kilojoules. So that's where we get the two moles of aluminum, it should say down here, two moles of aluminum creating 20, 30 kilojoules of energy. And then you, sh you can see as a conversion factor, moles of aluminum cancels out. And we get just kilojoules in the end. We should have three sig figs because 0.361 is three sig figs. Uh, 2030 is three sig figs. And then there's two moles of aluminum on the bottom there. That comes from the coefficients. And remember, those coefficients are nice, perfect numbers, nice, perfect ratios. So if we go ahead and calculate this out, we get 366 kilojoules released in the end. And I want it to say kilojoules released. Oops. Okay, so for this next problem, again, go ahead and balance it. Uh, if you're struggling with balancing, I recommend that you pause the problem at the beginning of each one and try and balance it yourself. And then check your answer after you're done. There's going to be three, two. Okay. Now this one's a little bit harder because we start with grams of nitrogen, which isn't the same thing as moles. And the chemical equation that we have doesn't work for grams. So what we have to do is we have to take those grams of nitrogen and convert it to moles of nitrogen. And then convert the moles of nitrogen into kilojoules, which is heat. Okay, conversion factor grams to moles. You should rem remember from stoichiometry that that's the molar mass coming from your periodic table. And then this new conversion factor, moles to heat, that we have, we're going to use a combination of our delta H and the ratio that we have up front. So looking at your periodic table, this says we have 8 grams of nitrogen. So to get the molar mass for nitrogen, we just take 14.01 off the periodic table and add it to 14.01 since there are two nitrogens. So this ends up being 28.02 for the molar mass. That's grams. OK, so we're going to set this up in this conversion factor like this. We have 8.0 grams nitrogen. We know that there are 28.02 grams of nitrogen in one mole of nitrogen. All right. We also know here, uh, according to our delta H, that for every one mole of nitrogen that we use up, this comes from the coefficient on nitrogen, it's just a one one mole of nitrogen used up, we get 46.2 kilojoules absorbed. 
you can look through the sig figs, um, try and figure this out. Um, because we have two sig figs on the 8.0, we end up with two sig figs in the end. So this rounds to be 13 kilojoules. For 2B, it says how much heat is absorbed when 10.4 liters of H2 reacts with excess N2. This is going off of the same balanced chemical equation. So we have what we're looking at here is N2 plus 3H2 yields 2NH3. And it gives us liters here originally, and again, we can't go directly liters to kilojoules. So what we have to do is go from liters of H2 to moles of H2 to Q, which is our heat, in this case, absorbed. Uh, so liter to mole conversion, that's our 22.4 liters at STP. Moles to Q, we're going to use our delta H and our ratio. So we start this off, 10.4 liters H2. We know there's 22.4 liters of H2 in every one mole of H2, assuming STP. Uh, this one doesn't say that, but always assume STP if it doesn't say it. All right, um, continuing on here. We're going to go from moles of H2. If you look at the, chem the balanced chemical equation, uh, it's three moles of H2. There's the co coefficient. And the amount of energy released is the same, 46.2 kilojoules for every time this reaction goes through. All right, and then if you add those together, it's three sig figs, and we end up with 7.15 kilojoules absorbed. So you might be wondering again about the sig figs here. Uh, that three on the bottom, that last three that we got there, that again was infinitely many because uh, it's a perfect ratio. It's a one to three to two ratio. And so we don't count those for sig figs. And 22.4 liters in one mole, that one mole is a perfect one mole, all right? So we don't count sig figs for that one either. All right, now I'm going to move on to the worksheet that you have that says enthalpy practice. So uh, this is a different worksheet, but it's the same type of problems. So we're going to take our first step and balance it. It's 2 and 3 and 2. Then here we're given grams of oxygen, so we need to go from grams of O2 to moles of O2. And then we can go to Q using our delta H and our ratio. Here, grams to moles is the molar mass. Molar mass of O2 is 32.00. So we're gonna start off here 64.0 grams of O2. We know that there are 32.00 grams of O2 in one mole of O2. And then looking at the balanced chemical equation, we know for every three moles of O2 that we consume, we produce 791.4 kilojoules of energy. Go ahead, multiply that all out. Um, I'll just go through the sig figs one last time on this problem, and I'll probably stop explaining it. 64.0 is three sig figs. That one mole of O2 on the top there, infinitely many, because that's the perfect one mole in the definition of the molar mass. 32.00 grams has four sig figs. 791.4 kilojoules has four sig figs. And then that three moles of O2, because it comes from the ratios up top, is the perfect number three, so that's infinitely many. So if you look through all of these, what we're limited by is that 64.0. It has 
three sig figs. So our answer needs to have three sig figs. If you multiply that out, you should get 528 kilojoules released. Problem number two here, if you look through it, you should see that it's already balanced. Given that uh, we, you know, we don't have any coefficients on it, this problem we're going to be going from liters of CO2 to moles of CO2 and then from moles of CO2 to our heat. Conversion factor, liter to moles, that's 22.4. Conversion factor, moles to Q, uh, that's our delta H and our ratio. So then we have here 35 liters of CO2, then 22.4 liters CO2 for every one mole of CO2. And then because the coefficient is one here for every one mole of CO2 that we use up, or I guess it produced in this case, for every one mole of CO2 that we produce, we're also producing 393.5 kilojoules of energy. Go through and multiply that all out. Two sig figs on our answer because of the 35. So we get 610 kilojoules released. Okay, uh, problem number three, this one pretty easy to balance. We just throw a two in front of this. It says we start with three moles of bromine. That actually makes this a really easy problem because we can go right from moles of bromine to Q with our delta H and our ratio. So this is just a one-step conversion. So we've got 3.0 moles of bromine. And then we know for every one mole of bromine, because the coefficient is one there, that we're going to absorb 72.80 kilojoules. Two sig figs on our answer there. That gives us 220 kilojoules absorbed. Okay, problem number four. This one a little bit more tricky to balance, but not too bad. You end up with two and five and two. This one gives us atoms of phosphorus. So what we have here is we're going to go from atoms of P to moles of P to Q. Atoms to moles, we haven't used that conversion yet today, but it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then moles to Q, that's our delta H and our ratio. So then we're going to start 2.45 atoms P. And we know that there are 6.02, oops, this is 2.45 E21. Uh, and then we've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms P in one mole of P. And then here looking at the balanced chemical equation, it's two moles of P consumed for every 886 kilojoules that is released. Okay, go through, multiply all that together. You should get 1.80 kilojoules released.
And then we have, as one last problem here, number five, again, pretty easy to balance. Put a two there. We're going to start on this one with grams of NO, grams of nitrogen monoxide. So you need to go grams of NO to moles of NO. And then from moles of NO to Q, grams to moles is the molar mass. Moles to Q, we're going to use our delta H and our ratio. So we have to find the molar mass of NO. If you look on your periodic table, you should see that that equals 30.01. So in this problem it says that we have 45.00 grams of NO. We know that there are 30.01 grams of NO in each mole of NO. And then, looking at the balanced chemical equation, for every two moles of NO, there's 108 kilojoules absorbed. Looking through all of this, we should have three sig figs on our answer, so that's 800, oh, 81.0 kilojoules. And in this case, it is absorbed. Okay, that is that. Uh, if you look through all these problems and you're still having trouble understanding them, please come in and talk to me. Uh, otherwise, um, thanks for watching.